The Lord wants a new reformation in his church in the 21st century. And this book, The Lord's Orchard, really sets out the kind of reformation that God wants to bring about within every church, not only in this land, but throughout the world. The kind of discipleship that he wants to see in the lives of every believer, all those who belong to those churches. This book is called The Lord's Orchard because of a vision that God gave me. There's a vast orchard that extends in every direction beyond anything that the eye can see. And each tree in this orchard represents a church, a fellowship of believers. And of course the branches of the trees represent the individual believers that make up those churches. The Lord showed me that in this orchard there are some trees that are very fruitful, there are some by contrast that are very barren. There are others that are in blossom which speaks of potential fruitfulness, but the fruit has not yet become fully developed. If you read the book you will see the full extent of this vision that the Lord has given and how his purpose is to ensure that every tree in the orchard every congregation of God's people becomes fruitful in the way that he intended by living the life of the kingdom by adopting the, the lifestyle of the kingdom Jesus taught us to pray may your kingdom come may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven this book is really like a charter that God has given a, a, a series of directions and yet it's very encouraging and enabling so that we can see how our lives can be impacted by God's Spirit to enable us to be the people that He wants us to be and to have the witness of light that will bring uh, light into the darkness of the world and enable the Kingdom of God to spread. It's a book that will be encouraging because it's based upon the truth of all that Jesus has done for us. But of course it's also a challenge. Compromise is the enemy of reformation. Superficiality is another enemy of reformation. And God does not want compromise or superficiality in any of his churches. He doesn't want just a religious form that lacks the power of the gospel in people's lives the power that can impact the lives of others to bring them out of darkness and into the light of God's kingdom. It is time for the church to be stirred by the Holy Spirit to a new movement that will enable the church to be the witness in the world that God intends. Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. So I believe this is a book for every believer, an absolute necessity for every leader in every congregation. So I encourage you to get a copy of this book and to work your way prayerfully through it. I, I trust that whole congregations will, will use this book, that every member of every church will be using this book so that their lives can come into line with God's purpose in the way that he intends. So just join me in a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have your divine purpose for your people. And we want to fulfill that purpose. We don't want to miss the best purpose that you have for your church and for every believer who belongs to those churches. So we pray for the precious anointing of your Holy Spirit to be upon this work of reformation that is going to come about in these coming weeks and years and we give you all the glory, Lord. Be glorified in your church. Be glorified in the lives of your people. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen.